It's time for the Gizwiz with Mads Maddest Rider, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1,972, recorded Thursday, January 25th, 2024. Oh, baby! On this episode of the Gizwiz, we head back to Vegas in CES for our round two of all of the gadgets that we looked at at CES. Plus, we go back and we look at an old gadget that we saw years ago at CES and see where are they now. All next on The Giz Wiz! It's the same with Dickie D and OMG chat on your PC. It's time for The Giz Wiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease. Under pathology, rows and rows of USBs, growing blue and LEDs. Get ready for The Giz Wiz now. Now! Now! And here he is, the gadgeteer from all over. Dick D. Bartolo, how you doing, Dickie D? I'm doing good, sir. And you? Doing good. Doing very good. I'm uh, excited for week two of CES coverage. Um, last week, I, I, I think I spent a lot of time thanking everybody for the fundraiser. And once again, thank you, everybody who supported the fundraiser. But honestly, I don't know if we chatted that much about the show and how different... It was this last year. I don't remember if we actually kind of talked about that. Well, I think you said that it was like old world CES. <laughs> it was. It was like 2020 crowd. CES, which yeah. happened just before the pandemic. Except yeah. that the West Hall was not open 2020. I'm pretty sure that the West Hall wasn't open that year. Maybe it was. Anyway, mm -hmm. this year... Yeah. Like I mentioned, it was very busy, but I found that uh, it, it, the, <clears throat> the breadth of the companies, I feel like, was a lot higher quality than in oh. past years, too. I saw some really cool companies uh, in... Um, I even saw, like, marine companies. Um, I, yeah, I, I saw had, boats there. Yeah, yeah, boats. I had never really seen that area. I saw much more concept cars on the floor than I had... In the past, and the 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 hall was just, I mean, absolutely filled with booths. Which uh, it was, it was great. It was a very, very, very good show, and um, I feel like it was just firing on all cylinders, which was hundred and fifty-five thousand <laughs> people. Golly. And Golly. they said more, uh, a little more than 4,500 companies showed up. Man. So. I, I wish yeah. I had the stats. What? How big? I need that on a graph to know. Um, because I don't remember. The, the, it felt like it was over 100,000 people. I'll tell you. That's, it actually felt <laughs> like that. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you joined the drone soccer team yet? No, not uh, not not quite. Um, I I think that the thing that uh, really blew me away this CES was um, also the acceptance of AI. That was everywhere. In fact, everyone was trying to hype their AI layer on a product that you've already seen, um, and even the advertisements around CES were. May, you could tell that they were made in some type of generative AI. All the images, <laughs> the, the, you know, the, Im the cover that they used on the magazine that they hand out. Um, oh, yes, yeah. And all the press releases came all, with that, that exactly. weird uh, CES heading thing. I yeah. think the weirdest AI thing was that head you showed last week. <laughs> we, we had... Yeah. The we head. That was that was that should be the we eared the weird we head. Oh that luckily is. their website is back up. Oh well we we saw this the other day. It, she said it was we head AI. I remember this. And we oh. had dot AI goes nowhere. We had dot com still works. Oh okay. um yeah, that was definitely the strangest of of things. Um do you feel like the switch to AI is gonna do you have a utopic outlook on this switch to AI, or how are you, you know feeling about what? it? I, 
I, I think this whole replacing people, you know, one of the late night shows made a video of Biden talking just to show that they made up a whole speech that right. he never made. Right. And that that is kind of scary that uh, fortunately you and I are not famous enough, or at least me. <laughs> I have to worry that someone's going to uh, impersonate us. Absolutely. Impersonate us. Yeah. I think Eric Duckman has it right in our chat. He says the military grade is going to be interesting. I mean, yeah. when yeah. <laughs> if World War III happens, it, there's going to be physical battles, but there's going to be digital battles, and those are going to be terrifying. Yeah. Well, you know, they should just have a physical uh, war online. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> open up World of Warcraft. Let everybody yeah, level for a little while, and then it's 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 built into the name War of World Warcraft. I mean, it's there like World there of you Warcraft. Go. You have regulations, a uh, hundred people on each side, <laughs> and that's esports. It. We'll f solve all of our issues with esports. That's what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. There you go. There you I go. like it. I like yeah. it. Um, nothing could go wrong. No, no, <laughs> there'll be no, ha no hacking, you know, and everybody will adhere to that. They'll say, I'm sure. oh, that's cool. Uh, we'll that's need cool. hack protection uh, on there as well. That's yeah. very funny. Um, okay, well, anything happened this last week? Yeah, Not well, yesterday I went to the, the New York Boat Show is in town. Oh, and, cool. Um, you know, I, I sort of feel lonely that I didn't don't have a boat anymore and that <laughs> the chances of having one are getting slimmer and slimmer now that when they closed the old marina in 21 they said in 2025 we'll have a spanking new marina well it's 2024 and they haven't touched the old marina oh my gosh so who knows when that's gonna happen I remember when you said 2025 and we thought that that was <laughs> So, so far off. Like, yeah, oh my, yeah, exactly. Like you couldn't exactly. have aimed a little closer on your due date on when the marine is going to be. In. But you're saying there's yeah. very little movement. No, very. Now. Yeah. I mean, the interesting thing is, I don't know if it's just a New York uh, boat, sh uh, bo boat show, but more and more boats, huge boats, are being outboard powered. Because, you know, last year Mercury introduced the 600 horsepower outboard. And now you have, you know, 30 and 40 and 50 foot yachts outboard powered because <laughs> you can put four outboards on it. You have 2,400 horsepower. Wow. Um, yeah. And I assume the outboard is easier to maintain. It's all just right there. It's like exactly uh, you, you can swap it out if you want to but the the big thing is all the space where the inboards would be and it's right. big would have two big diesels yeah you can have a hot tub yeah a, <laughs> an extra can... cabin a bigger bathroom yeah, yeah. no a garage yeah. for all your toys yeah that's where the engine used to be now it's sitting on the back of the boat a absolutely and, and then boats are getting more accommodating to that like a lot of boats now have a whole part of the transom that just opens and a platform out there so if you have to go out and clear something from a prop or add oil you used to have to lay over the transom and try and get the cover off now they just have a big door and a big swim platform so you can walk out and, and service the uh, outboard. I mean, the cost of outboards. Um, was it Yamaha? Somebody just introduced, I believe, a 450 horsepower engine. Take a guess at the cost. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, uh, 450 horsepower. I'm going to, I mean, assume we're in the car range. So I'm. I have no, I have I have almost no okay. basis to base. So I'm gonna I say thirty thousand dollars. Okay, just double that and add a little. 
75,000. 72,500. Nice. For yeah. one motor. One, yeah. And, and you know, with old Alpoid used to say, um, you know what, help me lift this off and we'll service it, that the 600 horsepower outboard is 1,260 pounds. <laughs> it, it is bigger than I am. I it's mean, a car. I mean, that's a, it's you've a attached a car. car engine <laughs> with cover. Yes, it's a, it's a car engine with a cover on it. Um, that's crazy. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Now, do you feel like electricity engines and electric engines and batteries and stuff, do you feel like that? You know, interestingly enough, I did not see as many this year as I did last year. I agree. Uh -huh. I, I saw a lot less. Um, it still seems like there's a, like a a yachting boutique sort of edge to, to all of the electric stuff that I've seen, but nothing really mass market production. Um, yeah. I is, think the problem is with a car, you have a way better chance of finding electricity to charge it. Mm -hmm. So on on a boat, if a boat has a 40-mile range, I, I think last year uh, we talked about, about a hydrofoil. I think it had a 40-mile range. You can just go 20 miles and you have to come back <laughs> because you know you have charging at your dock. Right. So uh, It, I it think feels I, like it's a... The energy density of fuel is still pretty good. And so you yeah. can have a massive fuel tank um, and, and, you know, it just stays there. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't, doesn't matter. I feel like most, uh, also, uh, most of the battery boats I've seen pair that with solar. So the idea, I guess, is yes. if you're going to do a big trip, you ch charge it. But now... Not only have you added the cost of the battery packs, which are expensive, but now a whole solar array on top, which doubles and triples the price of the, just the electrifying, which is expensive. Um, yeah. And I get the sense that there's not a lot of um, uh, partners. There's not a lot of uh, like manufacturing partners that are... <laughs> But, you know, it seems like an industry, almost like the automotive industry, where you're sourcing parts from yes. a whole bunch of different distributors, and the marine community is kind of like that, too, and there just isn't a drivetrain <laughs> for yeah, yeah. No, a boat, no, no. Uh, an electric boat. I mean, it, it'll come along at some point. Uh, I, I think the smaller engines will do well, people who have dinks. And there was a nice seven and a half horsepower electric motor there. I think they'll do well. Yeah. But when you get into the big engines, you have to worry about recharging them. And also, probably be much more uh, popular down your way where you have sunshine year round. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, to charge it. <laughs> I mean, you really, I also have to kind of rethink about how many of the larger boats are, are RVs. I mean, they just are mobile homes in, yeah. a, in the water and charge it and having that run off of just battery only is difficult. I mean, I can just imagine the, the resources <laughs> required for, for something like that is uh, not small. And then now yeah. make it mobile and able to weather the ocean. Uh, it, it gets expensive. Uh, you know, yeah. it's hard to unentrench that type of uh, industry. Okay. Anyway, let's let's go back to CES. Let's do it. Uh, so we uh, these are four more gadgets from CES. Uh, starting off with uh, a company that I have actually seen in the past. This is a brand new um, uh, product, though, just released. So listen up if you're someone who likes the mobility of a laptop but needs a lot more screen real estate. We're here with Zbeck with Alex. Absolutely. Alex, what are we looking at here? Because this looks like a triple monitor setup on a laptop, it which is. is very exciting to it me. Is. You are looking at our brand new Zbeck Snap. 
We just launched this. It started shipping a few weeks ago. So this is kind of a CES, pre-CES exclusive. I can give you a quick demo if you want to check it out. I would love a demo. And uh, actually, I think I've heard of Zbeck before. Yeah, you have, have been in the multi-monitor laptop yes. space so before. We, we're the original creators of the tri-screen. Um, we've got our Zbeck tri-screen 2 right over there. That was what we launched back in 2021. We launched our original tri-screen in 2019. Been around since 2018. The, the narrative's definitely changed from, hey guys, remote work can work for you, to uh, remote work works for everybody. Now let's build the best damn thing to make it great for everyone. So. And what is this new product called? So this is the Zbeck Snap. What okay, sh mean? show me that. That means that instead of being forced to have your monitors wow. in a very specific way, I can just grab this using our new patented Zbeck Snap technology. Instantly snap. Oh God, I'm trying to do this Vanna White mode. Let's try this again. Instantly snap. Give it a second. And then you don't have to run any cables to this display and it automatically pops up. You can also change it to landscape mode, to portrait mode. And then we built this really nifty app over here that allows me to adjust that. So let me show you. Which, this is like a way, way, way faster situation then really any, uh, I, not even just your previous products, but like anything I can think of to switch an orientation like that with a magnet and a, like a quick connector, that's awesome. Yeah, we spent a really long time working on the Zbeck Snap connection and we're really excited to be able to introduce it. It comes with not only this uh, you know quick connect, but we've also updated a number of other things. So the bracket itself is independent of the displays. What does that allow you to do? If you see what Zach's done over there, he's now connected one of our concept prototypes, which is our ring light. That gives you the ability to have a prettier face, if you will, or a brighter face or a more yellow face on camera. He's also got our prototype of our phone mount. So think of it like uh, in the power tools space. You're not just limited to displays. There'll be an entire ecosystem coming soon that enables you to build the best workstation for you. So using these mounts that you mount on the side of a laptop, you yep. can either have a monitor, a light, yeah. a MagSafe connector. That is really, really, really awesome. So, yeah. okay, walk me through the timeline and the price points yeah. of, of when we're going to see this product. Absolutely. So you can the Zbeck Snap is available for sale today. We just started shipping, like I said, a few weeks ago. So directly from our website, thezbeck.com is the way to get it. We sell it in the dual screen orientation. So just one monitor and the bracket for 540 we sell in the tri-screen configuration, so what you see here for nine ninety nine. And then uh, oh, that's all. And then these like prototype these, things. These three here are products that we are working on that will be coming out later this year. So um, stay tuned for all that. But that'll be coming to build out the ecosystem. So yeah, we're pumped. We're excited to be out here and uh, unveiling at Pepcom. And one final question is just popping into my head. What yeah. type of like compatibility do I have to think uh, about? That's the beauty. You don't have to think about it at all. So these work for Mac or PC. You can see Zach's on a ThinkPad. I'm over here on a MacBook. It works on M1 chip MacBooks. It works on the old Intel. The reason being is we've actually uh, embedded DisplayLink chips directly into the displays themselves. So these are running a DL6000 series DisplayLink chip. So uh, even if you only support one additional display like in the M1 MacBooks, you can run dual by downloading the display link driver and you're good to go. Um, and they're also super lightweight, so if you want to grab it, get a... I, get I a can confirm, this is lightweight. This yeah. is, and also, it, it feels pretty aluminum. solid. Yeah, it's anodized aluminum, so it's the same type of uh, material you'd see in your, you know, in my MacBook, for example. So, uh, lightweight, sturdy, premium feel, that's what we're all about here with our new Zbeck Snap. And one more time, where can people find out more? You can find out more at thezbeck, T-H-E, zbeck.com. Thank you so much for yeah, your time. Absolutely. Uh, this looks awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> you think you're going to be yeah. snapping? Well, you know what, Chad? What's holding the brackets on? So it's that. attached to the monitor of the other, of, of, uh, on there, uh, on like your laptop. Now, what is actually holding it onto the, that laptop? I'm not exactly sure. Oh, okay. I don't know if it's glue. I don't know if it's it friction. It has to be something good, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm hoping that they're uh, informational. Um, I think that was <laughs> who, talk, who talked to oh, me. Right. That was Alex. Um, and yeah, so but I've I've seen Zbeck in 
this space for a very, very long time. Yeah, I think did it a couple of years ago. It was more clunky. Yes. I mean, this is very streamlined. I really like the snap. Uh, I really like being able to yeah. um, snap it on and off. I think that also just for portability sake of, okay, time to leave, all I have to do is pop it off of the side of no, it's the clear. laptop. Do you know how big, the, how big those monitors are? Oh, my gosh. Uh, you're asking all the hard-hitting questions, Dickie D, and I have not. Oh, look, there okay. it is. This is okay. That's a great example of uh, how you attach it. Yeah, it's great. Look at that. Oh, there you go. It looked like she just cut it and a little clamp. It looks like it. Just, oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. It looks yeah. like it just closes on. That's super. And then those are your display port. Yeah. Um, and power. That's so cool. Okay, let me find the uh, size. Um, and. Now, I, I, in the past, when looking at these, there they are, 13.3 inches diagonally. Um, these are definitely oh, uh, more quality <laughs> than price, is they are very focused on the quality of the product. I've seen other smaller, even USB displays on Amazon, um, but you really are paying for the anodized aluminum, the higher quality screen, the so that is kind of built into uh, this product and in, in, in this gadget. Yeah, um, very nice. But yeah, very nice. Yeah, I think it's I think it's pretty cool. I like uh, uh, I like the Snap and um, the Zbeck uh, company. So looking good. Okay, moving on. Uh, this is an interesting gadget for communication with a very very unique interface. So uh, let's check it out. Hmm. So we're here hmm. with Milo. Peter, how are you doing? How has CES been treating you so far, Showstopper? Fantastic so far. Fantastic so far. Tell me a little bit about Milo. What are we looking at? What is Milo? So Milo is a wearable communication device for adventure sports and other types of applications. The whole idea is to enable natural voice conversation for groups and teams across a broad range of use cases. So, for example, you're skiing with friends, you want to be able to interact in the moment without stopping, without taking your hands off the ski poles and just having a natural conversation in the action. That's what Milo enables. So you simply take the device, clip it on. There's a range of clips. This, in this case, I'm using a pocket clip. I mute the device and go. And then you talk while you're moving, while your hands are where they need to be and you're having a natural conversation with everybody. So what sets this apart from like other walkie-talkies almost is that it's always on uh, and that uh, from my point of view is that it also creates a mesh and so it kind of just always being there, it's a completely different experience. You don't have to whip out a device and you know use it, it's just there. E exactly, you just clip it on and you go and you focus on the action and having a natural conversation with everybody around you without having to take a walkie-talkie Put it up to your face, push the button, press the button, talk, let go, and then wait for a response from somebody else in your group. So with it kind of always being on, what type of uh, like noise cancellation, like how, how clear is the voice? What have you all worked on there? We've done a lot of work to deliver clear, intelligible speech to everybody in your group. So we run very sophisticated, proprietary algorithms in software on the device. The device has six digital microphones integrated, we have a quad-core Linux processor, and we run those algorithms in software on the processor to filter out the background noise, the wind noise, and deliver clear speech to everybody in your group, regardless of the conditions. And just to be clear, how is one Milo communicating with another device? How is that working? Yeah, so the communication is through the proprietary MiloNet mesh networking protocol, which we, deliver, which we developed specifically for the requirements of voice in what are typically very dynamic conditions. So the devices create their own encrypted connection amongst one another, uh, and that's set up through a very simple group grouping process where you basically bring the devices close to one another, press the group button, and wait for the connection to be established. So no cellular data needed? No cellular, no Wi-Fi, no external infrastructure of any kind is needed. The devices create their own encrypted mesh network. 
And so uh, you had talked a little bit earlier about it kind of like always being on, but I assume there's a mute button and like talk me through like sort of the use cases. How are you going to be using it? Sure. The main use case is you simply have it clipped on and unmuted and having a natural conversation. But if you do want privacy, you can simply press the button on the front of the device, or in this case, I've unmuted it. And now it's muted. And if I want to do have it pick up my voice only when I'm pressing the button, I can press and hold the button. Now it is unmuted, let go, and the microphones are muted again, and I have privacy. So what are the uh, price points, and uh, is it already out in the market, or what's your timeline? Yes, the devices are on the market. We started shipping in 2023. Uh, we're in multiple retailers. We're in REI. Uh, we're in Shields, Amazon globally, um, and uh, multiple other places. And the retail price point is 249 per unit, so for a single Milo. Uh, and we have a range of accessories for uh, $19 and $29. And finally, this just popped back into my head, it's something we had mentioned earlier, is it, it's, uh, I, I really like that it's kind of a smart device and it can pair with other Bluetooth-enabled devices you were mentioning? Yes, yeah, so you can optionally, oh, well, firstly, you can use the device with just the built-in microphones and the speaker, or you can optionally pair it with a Bluetooth headset, so anything off the shelf, you know, AirPods, uh, what, I've what seen it? helmets with it integrated and things like that. Yeah, exactly. If you have something in your helmet, Bluetooth or wired, you can plug it into a Milo or you can pair it over Bluetooth to your Milo. Thank you so much for talking to me uh, with, uh, with Milo. This has been great. You're welcome. Okie dokie. Um, so yeah, not, that's, that's pretty good. I, th I think that is a really interesting uh, take on... Communication. It's almost like it almost feels like the GoPro of walkie talkies is like action sports, sir. You're racing down the mountains, so you don't have time to pull out a walkie talkie and talk. You just you just say stuff. Um, uh, it's kind of w the impression that I'm getting. Um, I will say they are expensive. Uh, like this two pack is. 550 bucks for, wow. for two of them. Um, the packs do, um, I believe that you save a little bit of cash as you bundle. So one is 250, two, so you save $10 if you get two of them. You save some money if you get three of them, that sort of thing. Um, the one thing that I also realized after the fact, um, is the range? Let me see. Long yeah, range. what is the range? That's what I was going to ask. So it mentions that depending on the terrain, oh, it's typically yeah, right. around three thousand feet. That is about a third of a mile. <laughs> um, in a mile, let me just double check my. Uh, yeah, there's about five thousand feet in a mile. So I guess three thousand feet would be about a half mile. So it's about a half yeah, mile yeah. of range, depending on terrain conditions. Now, it is it does create a mesh network. So theoretically, the, the range could extend if you have a Milo as a jump point, right? So your whole team could be a mile apart from the leader, if you had three yeah. people, the leader someone in the middle and someone at the end, that could be a full, you know, 6,000 feet or whatever because the middle person would be repeating it. So the mesh can grow. One Milo, even if it can't reach another, will bounce the signal to the third, um, which is what the, um, the fellow I was talking to um, mentioned that it would do. So uh, you, the, the, the range is a little bit, it can kind of fluctuate depending on how many of them um, that you're using. Yeah, and, and what's in the way. Yeah, and anything. what's in the way, yeah, if there's trees yeah. or if there's a mountain in your way. No, yeah, it's, like it's interesting. Yeah, I, I think it's pretty cool. I really also like that it uh, is encrypted. I think the pairing option is really, really cool because so many, you know, I remember going to a ski resort and just listening in on other people's conversations. And so you, I, you bring two Milos together, you pair them, and that's how they're now connected. And then, and you don't have to worry about channels, you don't have to worry about the encryption, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. They're just now connected together. Um, so it's a lot of really, really cool features. Um, also, uh, like you can see that they're 
uh, waterproof, which is also pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of really, really cool features. You are paying for it. Um, and I wish, I personally wish that the range was a bit longer. I would love it to be like at least two miles of range, um, at least, uh, would be what I'd prefer. Uh, there you go, Milo. Uh, moving r right along to a health gadget, Ooh. but in order to use it, you got to be young, and I mean really, oh. really, really young. We're here at Owlet with Kurt. Kurt, is, you, you are the founder, CEO, founder, CEO, yeah, inventor. Well, yep, one of the inventors. Extraordinaire, awesome. Right, like Willy Wonka. Yep, exactly. Give me the elevator pitch of Owlet. What is Owlet? So Owl, we make a wearable health monitor for babies that tracks their heart rate and oxygen levels, can notify parents if they need to go check on them. The big news today is that we have the first FDA approval for a baby monitor that's ever been given. So. Wow, that, and so show me the device. This is oh, yeah. this is the gadget. This is the gadget. It's it's really simple. It's a little wrap that goes around your baby's foot. On the inside here, you can see these little sensors. Um, they, they, it's basically just the same technology that's in your Fitbit or your Apple Watch, but for babies. And it, so it tracks their heart rate and oxygen levels, also tracks their movement so we can pick up sleep quality through the night. And we've got a digital sleep coach built into our app. So it just kind of helps you navigate that first year. And now with the FDA approval, you can share that data with your doctor so you can actually do care at home instead of taking them into the ER, you know, into the doctor's office in the middle of the night. Um, you can you can connect with the physician remotely, and you've got all the data you need. That's great. And what what type of you know that heart rate data and and uh, blood oxygen level? What is a parent kind of looking for in that? What are the concerns? Yeah, there's 92 million healthcare visits in the first few years of life. It's the biggest use of healthcare of any other time of life. Um, we also haven't seen infant mortality rates at home decline in over 25 years. And so really this is about giving parents peace of mind. They know when they need to check on baby. They have information that they otherwise wouldn't have had. And they can better navigate when baby's sick. Like the, the biggest reason for ER visits and, and pediatrician visits are respiratory infections. And so the baby's oxygen level is stable and everything's fine. It's a little bit different than if their oxygen's low and you need to get care. And so I think it helps parents navigate those situations at home and really just helps them have peace of mind. That's fascinating. How, how long does uh, this last like on a charge? Like what's a typical like kind of like yeah, home let me, use? Let me grab this. So this is our base station. This is kind of like the primary monitor for the parent. It's got a little light ring. So, you, you know, alerts you with lights and sounds on how baby's doing. If everything's good, it just goes green. So, you know, everything's good. So over time, people stop using the app and they just kind of glance over. It's like everything's good. I can go about my life. And parents describe it as like a deeper peace of mind that they have. But it's also the charger, so you just kind of, it's wireless charging, just clips on there, charges in about 20 minutes, put it on for another night of use. So you just kind of build that habit every morning when you take it off your baby's foot, goes right on the charger, and it's always ready to go, so. And then how long will the battery last, just the next day? Yeah, it's about 16 to 18 hours. Yeah, so it, it, it could last two nights, but most parents just clip it right back on at the end of the night. So. And then what's the price point? So it's two two ninety nine. One of the exciting things is that we have FDA approval for a prescription version. So if your baby is sick or they're coming home from the NICU, you can actually get a, a insurance reimbursement. So for a lot of families, they can get it for free if their child has a, a medical need. That's incredible. That's actually really, really cool. Yeah. And is it available now on the marketplace? It's available now. Today, we've announced the FDA approved versions are available today. You can pick them up. So Where you got it. Yeah, Target, Walmart, Best Buy. Um, you can also get it online. You can get a prescription from your doctor and we'll fulfill it right to your home. Um, or without a prescription, you can just buy it from our website. You can get the over-the-counter version from our website. What's your website? Owletcare.com. Thank you so much for chatting with yeah, me. This is you. such Thank a you. unique yeah. gadget. This is so, so, and honestly, the, the like peace of mind that parents must have about having that type of data is uh, that's pretty awesome. That's yeah, pretty we actually had six parents come into the office. We said, draw your life before Owlet and draw your life after Owlet. And they all drew the exact same picture after Owlet, which was them laying down, Z's coming out of their head. It was funny, it was like the exact same picture. So it's, they'd all just said deeper sleep, more reassurance, I feel better, which is great. That's awesome, that's awesome. Thank you, thank yeah, you yeah. so much. Appreciate it, thank Thanks. you. <laughs> Very young to yeah, use it. Yeah, like it's I pretty mentioned. neat. Pretty yeah, neat. I missed the price. Did it, how much was it? It was two hundred and ninety nine dollars. So okay. it's not cheap. Um, the and then 
it being FDA cleared means that prescriptions can be written for it, um, and so you can get that reimbursement. And then he also mentioned that data could be shared with your doctor. I wonder if, I was wondering if it was like, the data isn't reliable enough if it isn't FDA cleared. Like your doctor's like, I'm not gonna look at this data. If it doesn't have FDA clearance, I can't do anything with it. I don't know. <laughs> I, that was the impression that I got. Um, and so I could really see that the base station, if you set the base station like, you know, next to your own bed, um, right. and then you could see that it's just green, you know that your baby has enough oxygen, they're just they're sleeping fine, you're not worried about you're not worried about any of that any of that stuff. It is kind of funny because I kept kind of thinking of this gadget as like it's kind of missing something. And I think that's because I keep thinking of it as an Apple Watch, and it's like, well, where's the calorie data? How do you, how do I know about workouts? <laughs> <laughs> I have to remember. Yeah, this is for babies. I guess I guess we're not too worried about motion tracking and calorie tracking with babies. Um, so yeah, so it'll it'll uh, really only look at the heart rate, make sure the heart still still beating, and yeah, the blood yeah. oxygen to make sure that uh, they're breathing just fine and. Uh, that they're doing all right, um, which is which is really <laughs> that's the peace of mind that he's talking about is just kind of glancing over at this little puck in the middle of the night, yeah. and as long as it's not red and it's green, you're good. You can go back to bed. Um, and uh, they also were mentioning that there is uh, like see this hospital grade monitoring um, uh, that they are. Uh, it sounded like they they were like gonna be actually working with some hospitals uh, with some of these, so that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Owlet, um, the most advanced baby monitor. Moving on, uh, this was a really cool gadget that uh, at first glance kind of seems like just a, uh, a, a a gadget to to. Um, help with disabilities, but really, this is, I think, a very, very cool gadget for everyone. So, let's take a look. We're here Ooh. at Audio Radar. I'm here with Tim. So, tell me a little bit about what we're seeing back here. I'm seeing a first-person game played, but yeah. seeing all these kind of crazy lights around the monitor. Kind of explain what's happening. So, what you're seeing is Audio Radar. So, Audio Radar enables deaf and hard of hearing gamers to see the sound in video games. like. Call of Duty, PUBG, Fortnite. It's compatible with Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. It's just plug and play. And that's what you see on the screen behind us is we have a command center, and then we have six light bars to attach to your TV or monitor, and then you're off gaming. That is, so I'm intrigued not only because it seems like a really amazing accessibility option, but also, as just a gamer, this seems like a complete upgrade. Like, this seems like an extra, you know, way to have situational awareness about where the audio is coming from as well as it being an accessible gadget, which is really, really cool. Uh, have you had a lot of feedback from both, both sides? Yeah, exactly. So for deaf and hard of hearing gamers, it's a game changer. It takes their game to the next level. They're on par with the full hearing gamer. For a full hearing gamer, if you, most of us wear a stereo headset. So now you're listening in stereo, but you're seeing surround sound. So if I hear those footsteps in my right ear, I know if they're in front of me, on the side of me, or behind me instantly, so I can turn and take action that much faster. So it is a must-have tool for all gamers, and that only raises the water for, for this product being accessible to all gamers, because the more volume, the less product cost, and we can get it out there to more people at a reasonable price. And now uh, I want to... So, uh, introduce actually Brendan. Uh, Brendan is here, and this is one of an end user. We're also here with an interpreter, and I just kind of wanted to ask, how how, how necess uh, is this a necessity uh, whenever you're playing a first person shooter, or you know what what's your experience with uh, with it? Yes, yeah, exactly. But film him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> great. Well, thank you so much. It's a great question. So what typically has happened, I don't do a lot of multiplayer games because I have a not ability to hear and identify where people are in the game and oftentimes I mess up and lose. 
but with this technology, it brings me to an equal playing field with hearing players. I feel like I'm able to play and compete in the game as a multiplayer versus just playing individually alone. And so I'm able to participate, which is really cool. That is really, really cool. Thank you so much for sharing your side of the story. This is a really, really cool gadget, and uh, thanks, thanks for sharing your story. Can you show me a little bit of the hardware? What does it look like? Uh, like, what is a consumer getting when they open the box? It's a, uh, right here is, first of all, you know, starting with the retail packaging, you get this. It's a box, you have your audio radar command center, it comes with six light bars and all the power and connector cables that you need to, to get up and running in about five minutes. Um, the actual hardware itself, oops, is a command center. Um, on the back, you have an HDMI in, HDMI out. So you're just running HDMI from your PC or from your Xbox, PlayStation, Wii, what have you, your game console, into this, and then out to your TV or monitor. And then we have a light bar out. This is cables running to the light bars that are attached to your TV or monitor. That's what drives those. We have power. And for some PC gamers that want to use a microphone with audio radar, you actually have a headphone jack in the front, and then you can run the microphone jack back to the PC itself for communications. So in a previous life, I was an audio AV installer, and I kind of see the resemblance of maybe a 7.1 surround system, so I assume it kind of is plug and play that way? Is, is it kind of just taking those channels? Yeah, it's, we're just lighting up every single channel. So 7.1, like PUBG is six channel, uh, Warzone Call of Duty, seven channel. They're utilizing the center channel, which is... That's great. That's fantastic. And also, also that to me, it makes it obvious that it can really kind of work with everything, is that it really is a universal gadget because you're just using those channels that are embedded in typical audio, which is fantastic, which is really great. So what's the cost? So the cost is $3.99, and we sell direct from audioradar.com, and we ship globally. And is it available right now? We have a few units left. We sold out of the first batch. Uh, the reviews are in, they're really good, 4.75 star average, which is great. We're going into production again in about three weeks, and it'll be about a two-month production run, and then we'll be back in business in March, April, shipping. But we are taking pre-orders on the website now. Fantastic. Where can people find more, find out more information? Just go to audioradar.com. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. Good luck. Okie dokie. Yeah, Audio that was pretty radar. neat. Yeah. I thought it was really, really cool. I think that... Uh, he also ended up showing me uh, afterward that using the base station, you can also change the lights to do more than just the meters. Uh, so you could turn on like a selfie light mode, and so it just turns bright white, and so you can just kind of light up, which is kind of cool. Um, so anyway, I think it, it seems like a very well thought out product. You could really see in that base station that there's uh, quite a lot going on. It is not a small, dinky little thing. I really am yeah. uh, impressed with uh, how much they've, they've, they've built it out and, and really um, put into it. Uh, so yeah. It's kind audio. of fascinating that someone even thought to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And it, 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 honestly, it's, it's one of those things that just makes a lot of sense too because you have you know, already the 7.1 surround, or 7, you know, points surround, and so all you have to do is show, okay, it's coming from the front, it's coming from the back, it's coming from the sides, um, and the monitor really does kind of lend itself to that, which is, which is great. Oh, yeah, as you can see, every customer, you know, you could do selfie lights, um, things like that with the, uh, with the, with, with it instead. So, yeah. I do think it's it's on the expensive side. Again, all the gadgets we've covered are on the expensive side, but um, uh, it is a. I think this is a pretty cool and unique gadget. And just looking at it and looking at um, uh, it, looking at it in person, it really felt like they um, put a lot of thought into it. And it's a pretty streamlined gadget, which is pretty cool. Okie dokie, audio radar. I, you could do that in a Zoom call too to see where people are coming in from. Whoop, coming in from the left, coming in from the right. <laughs> where are you guys coming in on a Zoom call? Um, 
Okay, that is about it with all of the gadgets from CES. Uh, we, we still have a few more next week, but now let's head into Dick's Gadget Warehouse. They're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are loopy when gadgets pass away. He takes them out to play in Dick's Gadget Warehouse. Oh, on. When we're at CES, we like to take a look back on the warehouse. And so this if, is the two of us. What like, have we got? Yes, because <laughs> what we do like, is we, we go back, we find what we did, but then we, we don't research the company. We, it's kind of a reaction live on the show to see where they are now, what's going on. And if they if they survived, if they survived, so what what gadget do we have this week? Uh, well, it is it is called uh, Temp. Uh, I mean, you know, I have it written down here. Temp track. Uh, temp track. Okay, and I think oh well, you, you'll see your reaction to it. Let, let's watch our video. It's the uh, two of us. Yes, exactly. Um, okay, let me find it in our. I think it's reversed. I think I'm at CES. And you stayed home. I think so. I was just trying to figure that out. I look like I am at home. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, okay, second baby gadget is also uh, very interesting. It's called Temp Track. It is the Bluetooth wearable baby thermometer. What? And I thought the easiest way we to just describe this, it is they have a little uh, minute and a half uh, video on their website. And it'll tell you about Temp track with the appropriate having a sick AP. child is a difficult <laughs> experience for any parent especially when it comes to taking their temperature you don't want to disturb your child who is already feeling physical pain and discomfort but you also want to know if he or she is getting better or worse enter temp track the first 24-hour temperature monitor in the form of a soft, comfortable, single-use patch. Simply apply the patch under the Whoa, arm like a band-aid, and TempTrack uses Bluetooth technology to send immediate readings to any nearby smartphone. Yours, grandma's, or the babysitter's. TempTrack's built-in logging system continuously records and stores your child's temperature history, allowing you to share the readings with your doctor at the push of a button. While traditional thermometers are generally accurate, they require parents to continuously disturb a child that is not feeling well and are subject to user error. This adds to parents' emotional anxiety and worry for their child's <laughs> well-being. Dr. Eris Iliadis agrees, that saying, so a 24-hour temperature monitor that continuously records a child's temperature readings could alleviate many of the concerns of parents caring for a sick child. The child can rest and the parent can be alerted if anything changes. The makers of TempTrack designed the safe, comfortable patch with parents and young children in mind. Paired with our free Android or iOS compatible smartphone app, TempTrack provides at-a-glance current temperature display, 24-hour wireless monitoring without disturbing your sick child, temperature alerts that tell you when a fever spikes, easy data sharing, to keep your doctor and family members informed. And notes to indicate when your child eats, drinks, or takes medicine. <laughs> Once the patch is applied, your child won't even notice it is on, so he or she can sleep and move comfortably throughout the day. TempTrack even tells you when it's time to replace the patch. TempTrack takes the guesswork out of monitoring your child's temperature and replaces it with complete accuracy and peace of mind all day and all night. Okay. Wow. Track. Uh, that's it's kind the... of funny that we, we both picked the baby gadget, isn't it? It is funny. So in that little video, it seems kind of uh, almost like a prototype, I got to say. Yeah. Uh, well, you seem... should play your reaction. Oh, yeah, I guess should. Oh, here. Yeah. I'll, I'll go back. One second. I skipped out of it. Here we go. Uh, what did I say? Tells you when it's time to replace the patch. This is it. <laughs> wow. Uh, someone said in uh, Twitch chat, uh, coming to a theater near you, because uh, it <laughs> looks so sci-fi. That does not look real. 
Wow. Uh, this was yeah. in 20... Well, now, the thing is... December 2015. You know, if it's your kid, you're probably not going to be concerned about the money. Basically, you're paying a buck an hour to monitor the kid's temperature because oh, wow. uh, it's, uh, it's 25 bucks and it runs for 24 hours. It'd be, it would be nice, but I doubt if you could do this. It'd be nice if like, you could shut it off and then turn it back on again, but my guess is once you get it going, it just goes for 24 hours and then you'll get a notification when the battery's uh, dead. Well, I guess it has to send you a notification just before the battery dies. But I, I think a person who, who could get a good night's sleep, knowing that they, their phone will go off for whatever temperature they set, gives them, it, it's probably worth the money. And, yeah. and, and also the fact that you have a, a, a record of the entire night of what the temperature was doing. And, uh, you know, a lot of these apps say, and you can send it to your doctor. I can't imagine any doctor uh, wanting to, <laughs> to have their patients sending them wads of info about, you know, <laughs> what's the kid's temperature now? I don't want to know what it was at 7 a.m. That is, I, I'm surprised. It, and you can buy it now, which is, yes, it, I thought it this just, was a concept or like a no, no. video. <laughs> it's available now. I'm it's, laughing at myself in the past. Now. Now. Exactly. I know it, 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 it did get a lot of very good press. And uh, like I said, I, I think it, it, it's a great idea if you're worried about You'd like to get some sleep, but you don't want to oh, uh, get up every three hours. You certainly don't want to wake your... That is so... I, it's I'm funny. Guessing it's I gone. Can, I'm guessing it's not around. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, it's funny because back then I was like enamored with just how small it was. It seems like I was like, it's just a sticker. Really? Yeah. It looks like it's coming but, to a movie near, near me. Um, but you know, it was like that site we did where in an emergency, the battery will never be dead. You just add water. <laughs> and then we re you were the one that, that said, do you realize that once you put water in the flashlight, you'll have 24 hours of flat, but you can't shut it off. So exactly. Once you wait, You're done. It's, <laughs> it's on. So this and is on. 20, 24 hours and then you have to replace it. That's crazy. So it looks like I just did a quick Google search. Looks like Temp it's Track. Gone? It, it's it's spelled correctly. The website still seems there, and they have COVID information. This is a good good sign. Oh it looks God. like it's working. It Ooh. is the same website. They've upgraded to the 70, 72 hour patch. Oh, whoa. look at that. Now, you know, I'm suddenly watching the video. I guess that's more when your child is sick, right? Yeah. So, like, they're sick and then you patch them. Yeah. Uh, wow. How do I... I'm trying to see where I buy it. I don't see a buy button. Learn more. Learn more. Contact us. Okay, let's learn more. How do I buy you? <laughs> <laughs> Huh. Huh. It still seems like this is a concept, not an actual gadget. Oh, oh interesting. Where is this, Tim Trek? Well, what? if Scooter X hasn't found it by now, it doesn't exist. Exactly. What on earth? Resources? I don't see it. Here's a Walmart link? No, oh, Scooter okay, X said the copyright date on the website is 2024, so someone's there. Either that or they just, what date is it? Oh, yeah, they have an automatic, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, huh. Dang it. I, I was excited to see if uh, you could actually purchase it. Oh, here you go. Scooter X found it. Walmart. So, is that the same thing? It says temp track. It says out of oh, stock. This is the same link I saw. Is it just says oh. out of stock? Okay. Um, yeah, it's. So I, I, they probably made it, and then oh, these things are old. There's a review from 2015. I, uh, I don't think it's actually a real product yet, or if it was, it's not being created. Yeah. 
That's so interesting. Temp track. It seems like a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> seems like a really, really good idea. <laughs> also, I'm trying to understand this on their website. What is this? They have this map. Clinic integration. So outpatient, inpatient. It goes to their cloud and then directly to the doctor or nurse. Huh. Interesting. That is so interesting. They're like really, it, seems, it makes me think that they're really aiming for hospitals. They're like really trying to get uh, yeah. some hospitals uh, to work on this. Um, interesting. So it looks like uh, yeah. our chat room is uh, given other options. So this is, Scooter X is sharing a similar gadget Wearable digital thermometer continuously monitoring for 24-7 costs 50 bucks, but this actually looks like a real product, mostly because it has bad reviews. <laughs> oh my God, look, when the, when the one stars outnumber the five stars. Yeah. yeah, but it does seem like a real product. It seems like it actually yeah. exists. It reminds me, this also reminds me a bit of those, uh, it's not quite the same, but the temperature sensors, do you remember? Uh, the temperature sense stickers is what I'm trying to say. Oh, um, yeah, for your forehead, right? Yes, I, except yeah. except that you know you you probably want something that'll send a notification or something like that. Um, you know, I'm surprised that people haven't uh, just made this just a, a little, little bit simpler, but just like a, a a band, like just a just make it a loop, just put yeah. it in the band. Um, what is this? Currently unavailable. Oh, 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 okay. Amazon, where, what is Amazon.sg? We are really reaching here. This is kind of incredible um, how far we're trying to find this product. <laughs> nope, not available. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm going to say no, not available. doesn't look like this is a production, in production gadget, but. Uh, Pretty cool, Temp Track. Seven fun. years ago, we talked about yeah. it. I kept saying 2015, but it was uh, uh, January 2016 is when we were looking at it. So uh, it still seems like they could. And the 72 hour, hour patch is just right around the corner. Yeah, it looks <laughs> like it, it, they should be up to 96 hours by now. Exactly. The mm. heck. We'll check back in another seven years, and it'll be at a week <laughs> long. Um, I want to say thank you to our patrons over at patreon.com slash gizwiz. Thank you guys so much for your support of our show. Really, 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 really appreciate y'all continuously supporting us every single episode. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you like the gizwiz, please consider giving back at gizwiz.tv, and you can click on the Patreon tab, and that'll take you to our Patreon page. There's also a little link there that'll take you to our PayPal, or you can head directly to patreon.com slash gizwiz. Thank you guys so, so, so much for supporting our show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Gizwiz.tv is where we record this show live just about every Thursday, 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern time. We're back to a slightly regularly scheduled uh, I mean, our regularly scheduled episodes are uh, coming back um, next month. I'll be polling the patrons to see what the crappy corner theme is going to be. And we'll uh, start the first uh, week with some CES gadgets and then uh, move on from there. It's fun because we realized uh, at the beginning of the show, it is a uh, leap year this year. And the guess Wiz is on it. So we're going to have five weeks. Uh, next month, which is super duper awesome. So to catch the show live, head on over to gizwiz.tv. The website will just update with the live stream uh, about the time that we start, 7.30 Eastern uh, uh, time, 4.30 Pacific time. Is that right? Am I, am I saying that right? Yes. Uh, and uh, head on over to gizwiz.tv and uh, watch it. Join the chat room and chat along with everybody. If you don't catch the live stream, our episodes are there on our website after the fact, gizwiz.tv, or you can head to the podcatcher of your choice or YouTube 
all these are options for you to watch the show. Head on over to gizwiz.biz, that's Sticky D's website, who, where he writes articles about all of the gadgets that we talk about on the show. So if you're needing a link back, head on over to gizwiz.biz. While you're there, play What the Heck Is It? This is an entire gadget that you gotta guess what the heck it is. And I actually already know. Uh, this is a uh, camping lantern for ants. <laughs> if you think you know what this is, get a guess at gizwiz.biz. Six med mad magazines for correct answers. 12 men magazines for funny, clever, or hilarious answers. So get a guessin' over at gizwiz.biz. That about wraps it up for our show. We'll see you next week. I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs>